Roto. You'd think that a Clockwork Orange was banned by some government entity for its infamous ultraviolence, right? Well, surprisingly, only three countries, Ireland, Singapore, and South Africa, ever outright banned the movie. What really happened was in 1973, Stanley Kubrick asked for the film to be pulled from circulation in the UK, and there were a bunch of real life incidents that led to this decision. It wasn't until 1999 that a big one came to light. In a statement after yanking the film, Kubrick said the buzz around the Clockwork Orange had spiraled beyond just artistic expression or social commentary. It was affecting his personal life, especially the safety of his family. In a 1999 interview with The Guardian, Kubrick's wife Christine dropped a bombshell that they'd been receiving death threats. She was quoted as saying Stanley was really upset about it because he didn't want anyone to copy anything. Then there was also the public uproar. It wasn't just about the film itself. The media began reporting stories of copycat violence, trying to lay some blame on the film. Uh, just a year after the film came out, a 16-year-old boy attacked a homeless man in Bletchley, UK, mimicking a scene from the movie. You know, the uh, the one under the bridge where, the, where Alex and the Droogs attacked the homeless man. Now, this was the exact same year that a gang of teens dressed as Alex and his Droogs assaulted a schoolboy, leaving him blind in one eye. Now, the first murder that the media tried to tie to the film happened in 73 in the Netherlands, when a 17-year-old boy named Richard De Witt killed a girl and claimed he was influenced by the ultraviolence. In an interview with the New York Times, Kubrick said the age of the violent, mindless hooligan has arrived, and it is not a product of a clockwork orange. It is the product of a society that prefers to believe it has no sociopaths, which makes perfect sense. These movies push boundaries in their depiction of extreme situations and themes. The reactions they elicited, including bans, cuts, and public outcry, are a reflection of broader societal fears and concerns at the time of their release. Let me know in the comments which movies I should consider for part two. I wouldn't blame you for thinking The Day After was banned because of its graphic portrayal of nuclear war. But that's not the case. Well, it didn't get banned here, the movie's impact went way beyond just being another TV show. It actually instilled fear, not just in viewers, but in world leaders too. When The Day After aired in 1983, over 100 million Americans tuned in, making it one of the most watched TV events ever. But here's the thing, it hit President Ronald Reagan hard. Before the movie aired, there was a huge outcry from conservative groups and mental health professionals. The graphic scenes showing the immediate horrors of nuclear war were seen as too disturbing for primetime television. Could you imagine that with 24 seven internet videos of what's going on in the Middle East right now? We're inundated with this stuff and just one simple movie sent shockwaves through the whole country back in the day. It's, it's so funny how we've evolved. At the time, ABC even set up counseling hotlines for viewers needing emotional support after the broadcast, but the real shockwave came after it aired. In a diary entry from that year, Reagan admitted that watching the day after shook him and made him rethink the consequences of nuclear conflict. At the height of the Cold War, the day after was more than just a movie, it was a cultural phenomenon a wake-up call that made an entire generation face the terrifying reality of nuclear annihilation. I feel like we need that type of intervention today as well, because if you look at the news or even social media for even half an hour, it's difficult not to come across some new story that makes you feel like we're inching closer and closer to nuclear war. You know, I think the doomsday clock is a few seconds away from midnight at this point. And you know, it's kind of scary, but Hopefully we figure it out. Doomsday's over the top mayhem was intense, but what really sparked censorship in some places was how extreme its graphic content was. Released in 2008, Doomsday is a movie by director Neil Marshall. It follows a virus outbreak that forces a team to enter a quarantined zone filled with savage survivors. It's brutal fight scenes, cannibalistic tribes, and post-apocalyptic chaos grabbed a lot of attention. And not just from sci-fi fans. In the UK where it was made, 
the British Board of Film Classification gave it an 18 certificate, warning that the sustained and realistic violence could really disturb viewers. But in Germany, they cut certain scenes, especially the cannibalism, to make it more palatable for audiences. Personally, for me, I think that when you cut scenes like that, you ruin the artistic expression. And at that point, you should just ban the movie outright. Don't cut stuff. Either show it the way that the creator wanted it to be shown and seen or don't show the movie at all. Now, Singapore took it even further, heavily censoring the film due to its mix of excessive gore and anarchic themes, which they thought were too intense for their viewers. Doomsday wasn't just controversial. For its violence, it also paid homage to classics like Mad Max and Escape from New York. Its unflinching look at societal breakdown created an atmosphere that some countries deem too volatile. Despite the mixed reviews and edits in certain places, Doomsday has made a name for itself as a brutal, energetic entry in the sci-fi genre. While its shocking content might not have led to worldwide bans, it definitely left its mark on censorship advocate and audiences who weren't quite ready for that level of carnage. Now, if you want to talk about a real controversy, this is a controversial sci-fi trope that YouTube first restricted, then forced me to censor before re-uploading. Check that out.